Welcome to worship this morning, friends. It's good to have all of you with us for worship. Just a few reminders. For right now, we are encouraging you to refrain from singing or joining in the responsive readings. We look forward to very soon having a plan so people who can join in are invited to do so. But for right now, our focus is on keeping everyone healthy and safe. So we're going to let our liturgist do our responsive readings for us and our wonderful soloist, Jessica Hitchcock, do our singing for us. We're still looking for a couple liturgists this summer. If you would like to join in this wonderful ministry, you are invited to. You can check with Art, and he would be happy to get you on the schedule. TLC is selling Mother's Day hanging baskets. For $20, you get a beautiful 10-inch hanging basket from Kettle's Greenhouse. If you would like to purchase one today, there's a black mailbox in the hallway next to the choir office right outside the sanctuary. You can put your money in there. And if you are watching from home and you would like to purchase one, you could call the church at 570-675-3131, or you can use the fundraiser website that is listed in the announcements that are, that are up on our webpage. We do have a congregational meeting coming on May 30th, immediately following worship, to elect our nominating committee. We encourage you to attend if you are able. We encourage you to think about if you might be willing to serve on our nominating committee. Our nominating committee is a wonderful way to serve the congregation. It involves um, prayerfully discerning who God is calling to different ways of serving and just calling those people and seeing if they understand that God would like them to serve in that way as well. It's usually just a summertime commitment and it's usually no more than seven meetings. This might be a strange year, but it's usually just a few meetings. So we encourage you to be considering if God is inviting you to serve in that way. Just a reminder that we need announcements in the office by Tuesday so that we can get them all in the bulletin and that newsletter articles will be due on May 24th. Men's Club does have a chicken and biscuit dinner coming up on the 22nd. It is takeout only and it is pre-orders only, which means if you are coming, you need to buy your ticket now so you have your ticket. You can call the office to pre-order. If you are here with us in person today, we have some Men's Club members here who have tickets and who can sell you them. We encourage you, if you know you want to participate in that meal, to be sure to get your order in. It does go fast, and there are lots of people who are really excited about it. Our rummage sale is planned for June 18th and 19th, and we're collecting jewelry donations only right now. If you have jewelry donations, you can drop them off, or you can contact Allison Lord. Her information is in the announcements, and she can make plans to get those from you. We do have some book clubs starting this summer for those who would be interested. It's a way to get together with some friends and read some interesting things and have some good conversations. If you know that you would like to join a book club, you can sign up on Facebook. We have a Facebook group. If you do not use Facebook, but you would like to sign up, you could call the office and let Nicole know and she'll make a list of people who would like to be in a book club, but would not like to, but do not use Facebook. The hope is this is just a way for us to be having good conversations and working together and building new friendships across unexpected places. We do also have some tentative plans for some summer receptions, some summer lemonade on the lawn. In order to do that, we need some people to help with table setup and table takedown. So if you're someone who could do that, if you want to let me know after worship today, I'd be happy to check in with you about what would be required. Or if you know someone who could do that, it would be lovely if you could um, let them know that we could use that assistance. I know we would all really like to be together again, and we're working really hard on figuring out the safest, healthiest ways for us to be together. So. I invite you to be praying about if you could put up and take down some tables as a way of serving God. Friends, as we get ready to worship, just your last announcement that we do need a couple of people to stay and just help sanitize when we're done. The sanitizing bottles are all up front. So as you leave today on your way out the door, you'll have your chance to pick up your communion elements to take and consume at home. If a couple of you could hang back and help sanitize, that would be lovely. Friends, let us begin our worship of the Lord this morning with our prelude.
Good morning. Please listen to our call to worship. This is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never put it out. Hallelujah. This is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Hallelujah. Christ is our peace, the indestructible peace we now share with each other. Hallelujah. listen to our call to confession. We cannot come before God unless we are first honest with ourselves about who we are, about the mistakes we make, and about how well or poorly we care for others. In this spirit, let us offer our prayers to God. The prayer of confession. Almighty and merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared to the world in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful God, for his sake, that we may live a holy, just, and humble life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Please take this time to observe your own personal confession.
Friends, hear and believe the good news. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. Let us listen to the response sung for us by Jessica Hitchcock. children who are worshiping with us in the sanctuary, they're welcome to come forward and sit in the front pew. Natalie, Calvin, that's you. Good morning, Natalie. How you doing? And good morning to all our boys and girls out there who might be at home this morning or listening at some other time. We're so glad that you could be with us. And all of you big people out there, welcome too. We've been talking in church about how we worship and the kinds of things we do in church when we worship, right, Nat? Okay, so last week we talked about praying, and this week we're going to talk about stories, about Bible stories that we hear when we come to church. You know, our church, this place right here, is full of books, right? There are books in the nursery school. There are books stacked over here. Miss Pam has her own collection of music books. If we go in pastor's office, we'll find a whole bunch of books that she reads that help her to do her job for us better here at the church. So we all have books, and we all love books. But there's one more in book more important than all the other books. And what is that book? I bet you know, Natalie. The Bible, absolutely. And we have lots of Bibles here at church. And I bet you have Bibles at home also. I brought just a few of the ones that Mr. Hunt and I have at home. This is a great Bible here because it allows you to color in it. And I love to color. When you color, it helps you remember what the verse is that this story is about. So it's a really cool Bible. Here's another Bible we have at home. And this was my Bible. When I was 10 years old, my parents gave me this Bible for Christmas. And I don't know if you all remember sitting out there, 
But during that time, Bibles had zippers. So you got to close them up and zip them up tight when you weren't using them. Here's a Bible I gave Mr. Hunt when, after we were married, and this is a men's Bible, and it has great stories in it. For men, besides the words of God, and this looks like a children's Bible, doesn't it? This one here is really amazing. It's really heavy, like really heavy. And this Bible has been in my husband's family since the 1880s. It is really old. So we have lots and lots of Bibles. And we have these Bibles because when God first created the world, he talked to people like I'm talking to you now. But then he decided that everything needed to be written down so that everyone would know the stories. And so when we come to worship in church, we come to pray. We also come to hear the stories. That's why I stand up here and talk to you and give you a children's message. And that's why Pastor stands up there and reads from the Bible and gives us a sermon telling us how to live our lives the way Jesus would want us to. So our Bibles and the stories that we hear from our Bibles are very, very important. So remember, we're filling up on those stories and we're telling those stories when we leave because God wants us to share the stories in the Bible with everyone. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of your word, for the gift of the most precious book ever, the Bible. Help us remember to share these stories whenever we get an opportunity. In your precious son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you.
Our first, our first scripture lesson, some of you may recognize Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Here ends the first scripture lesson. Friends, I invite you to listen now to our second scripture lesson from the Gospel according to John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and they know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, and I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Friends, let us join our hearts together in prayer. Gracious God, open these holy words to us that we might hear your invitation to be sheep and to be shepherd, to be following you, and to accept the goodness that you offer us. We ask these things in your son's name. Amen. So one of my favorite things for the last few weeks is this little short video on Facebook. Some of you who use Facebook might have seen it. I posted it along with the announcement of this week's worship service so that people could maybe get to see it beforehand. In the video, what you see is this long trench that has been dug along the side of a road. And you see this fluffy bit of white stuck in the trench. This young boy, I would guess he's maybe 10 years old, comes along with some sort of sling, pulls out of that trench that white piece of fluff, and out hops a sheep. He comes out jumping, and he bounds off along the side of the, the ditch. And just a few feet later, he falls right back in the same ditch. You watch the sheep jump up and you watch him just go right back in. Many of my friends who have posted this video have noted that often our life is like that of a sheep, that we make bad choices and God pulls us out and then we run right back to that bad choice just like we made it before. This is how it is in the life of faith. It's often one step forward and two step back. It's often Jesus pulling us out of the ditch and us just falling right back in it. But God is always there for us. God is always trying to help us. God is always inviting us to move forward. And God loves us even when we jump back in the ditch. The video doesn't show it, but I imagine the small boy walks along the path, gets to the sheep again, pulls the sheep out again. And I imagine no matter how many times that sheep dump, jumps in that ditch, that little boy is going to be there to save him. God is there for us, no matter what mistakes we make. And God loves us and comes for us wherever we have wandered to. But God does want better for us than what we have right now. 
God will keep pulling us out of the ditch, but I think God might like it if we stopped jumping into it. I think sometimes we need to ask ourselves why we like the ditch so much, why we keep going back to things that don't work for us, why we make choices that hurt ourselves and hurt each other instead of moving forward. We start today with the 23rd Psalm, which is this beautiful, powerful reminder of what God gives us. That God gives us cool water, good food, that God makes us rest, and that God restores our souls. Sometimes, though, I think we're not so keen to take up the offers that God has for us. We don't necessarily want rest or to be restored. Sometimes we want to be angry. Sometimes we want to do our own thing. Sometimes we do not want to eat the good grass that God offers us. We want to eat an entire bag of potato chips and be angry about the world. But God invites us to trust in the provisions that are before us. God knows that this is hard work the psalm promises not just that God makes things calm and peaceful, but that God sets a table before us in the presence of our enemies, and that we walk together through the shadow of the valley, through the valley of the shadow of death. The psalm promises that things will be hard, but that God will be with us and give us everything we need, but maybe not everything we want. The thing that we often miss about sheep is that sheep are foolish animals. Sheep will eat until they are sick. Sheep will sit beside beautiful water and forget to drink. And sometimes we are those sheep. Sometimes God offers us rest and we just cannot take it. Sometimes God gives us beautiful gifts and we just can't see them. My hope in this season is that we might seek to be wiser sheep, taking the good that we are given, trying to see the blessings of this moment, not being so concerned with what we want that we miss what God is giving us. We hear as well from Jesus about how he is the good shepherd. Jesus lays it all out to the disciples about who he is and how he will act. Jesus promises them that he will care for them, but he also promises them that there are other sheep, that those disciples are not his primary concern. The other sheep are. He has come into the world to find those who are lost, to welcome them back into the flock, and to find ways to move forward. Jesus comes into the world not to make himself great, nor to make great his followers. Jesus comes into the world to lay down his life so that all the sheep can hear the call and reply. Jesus comes into the world to invite in people who are on the outside. Jesus does not come to protect that small little club that he has built. Jesus comes to send that group out into the world so that they can be shepherds, so that they can find other sheep and welcome them in, so that they can lay down their lives for others. The work that Jesus comes to do and comes to invite us to do is the work of loving people who are stuck in ditches and inviting them to experience the grace of God. As often as those people need to experience grace of God before they are willing to change. See, the sheep who Jesus calls, they're not perfect. Nor are they always just like us. They're simply people who need to hear the good news. It's easy to imagine that we are the kind of people who are never foolish enough to fall back in the same ditch again. But my guess is, if you think about your life, you just might have been. 
I know there are mistakes I make every week. There are mistakes I make every day. There are mistakes I make every hour. And the invitation is to be thoughtful and kind with others as we are thoughtful and kind with ourselves. To choose each day to start again. To invite others in, not making this harder than it has to be, but pulling our friends out of the ditch, walking together, and stopping to sit when they fall in again. Part of the work of laying down your life for your friends and I'm going to be honest with you, this is the easiest part of this work, is letting go of wanting to have things your way and accepting that other people might need things to be different. The invitation to go out into the world and to make disciples is not something we can do if we only want people just like us to join. It's not something we can do if we refuse to change anything about who we are. It's not something we can do if when people come and sit in our pew, we growl at them like angry dogs. Jesus calls us to lay down our life for other sheep. And some of what that means is setting aside what we want for what other people need. Shepherds are not invited to worry about their own cares and their own needs. Shepherds live rough lives out in the field. Shepherds do not care for their own comfort. They care for the comfort and safety of the sheep. So we are invited to grow from being sheep in need of a shepherd to being shepherds' apprentices, calling sheep in, laying down little bits of our lives, one want at a time, so that other people can have what they need to hear the good news of the gospel. I hope that as life drifts back to the way things used to be, we make space to listen deeply to each other and to God. We make sp space to be willing to change so that others can come in and experience the good news. We make space so that what other people need, they can have, even if it means giving up something we want. Friends, let us listen as Jessica sings for us, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Jesus, blessed Jesus, 
Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. And people will come from north and south and east and west and sit together at this table. At this table, we are invited as the sheep of God's own flock to come and drink the cool water, to enjoy the green grass, to be filled up by nourishment and sent out into the world to love and serve the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you have cared for us, the sheep of your flock, in every season of our lives and of time. From the beginning of the world, you put all things into place that we needed. You have cared for us when we have gone astray. You have sent us prophets to guide us, priests to lead us, kings to rule over us, and you sent us Jesus to live amongst us to be our good shepherd, to invite us to a new way of being, and to care for us even when we go astray. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, help transform us into your shepherds, going out into the world to lay down our lives for you, for the church, and for all of those sheep who need to hear the good news. May that same spirit through your work transform these elements from ordinary cup and plate to your body broken for us so that we might be filled up and sent out into the world. We ask these things in your son's name. Amen. Friends, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the meal, he took the cup and poured it out and said to his disciples, this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. As often as we drink this cup and eat of this bread, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Friends, as you leave, you will have the chance to take some elements that have been prayed over home and to enjoy them. I invite you not to think of this as a burden of corona, but to think of this as the blessed extension of the table. The reminder that this is not the only communion table, that your table at home is also a place where you praise and worship God, that the tables in the world where you go to lunch with your friends are also a place to praise and worship God. That when Christ says, every time you drink this cup and break this bread, he does not mean once a month in worship. He means every time. So as you go forth from this place to consume these elements, remember the sacredness of every meal and every moment. Amen. Friends, we invite you to return to God the blessings you have received. If you are with us in worship as you recess, you'll have the opportunity to do so. If you are watching from home or from another location, you can certainly give online. You can mail your offering into the church office, or you can give using, or you can drop your office, the offering off in the office when it's open. We encourage you to continue to give generously to help support the ministry of this congregation and of God's work in the world. Amen. Jesus walked this lonesome valley, he had to walk it by himself, oh, nobody else could walk it for him, he had to walk it by himself. We must walk this lonesome valley. We have to walk it by ourselves. Oh, nobody else can walk it for us. We have to walk it by ourselves. 
ourselves. We must clasp our hands together. We have to clasp them in the air. Oh, nobody else can clasp them for us. We have to clasp them by ourselves. We must lift our to lift them up ourselves. Oh, nobody else can lift them for us. The prayer of brotherhood is there. Jesus walked this lonesome valley to walk it by himself. Oh, nobody else could walk it for him. He had to walk it by himself. Friends, as we prepare to come before God in prayer this day, I invite you to be praying for our sister, Debbie Cooper. I invite you to be praying for those who are in the hospital recovering. I invite you for, to be praying for Jules. I invite you to be praying for me. I have to go have carpal tunnel surgery on Wednesday on my other hand. And if you heard me talking in the sermon about how we don't always want to rest, and sometimes Jesus makes us rest, that might be right where I am on this question. <laughs> so be praying for me that I might be smart enough to take the invitation to rest. Let's come before God in prayer. Gracious God, we come before you today to pray for those who we know, to pray for Deb Cooper, to pray for those who are in the hospital recovering, to pray for those who are in rehab centers, to pray for our brothers and sisters who are ill, for those who are struggling, for those who are mourning. Help us to be a community of faith who surrounds each other with love and helps each other to move forward and to trust in you. Help us to shepherd each other gently, even when some of us are in the ditch. We give thanks for this church and for all that you are doing in and through us. Continue to transform us with the work of your Holy Spirit, that we might be invited into new ways of knowing you, into new ways of trusting you. Help move us forward, that we might choose to follow you to a future you have imagined. Help us to know how best to love each other. We pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. Friends, let's go forth into the world to try to shepherd each other well, to care for each other, and to invite other sheep to come and join the flock. Let us listen now to our choral response sung by Jessica. Dearest and best For a world of lost 
Cheers.